Violin. Uh, I'm Daryl Thompson. I'm a chef in the uh, Milwaukee Brewers organization. I'm currently playing uh, AAA right now in Nashville. It, it's been a wild ride the last couple of years. So uh, pretty much a seven year indie ball grinder. And then, you know, after that last season had to really put up some huge numbers and then, you know, was able to kind of reap the rewards off of, of a really good year and got signed in the off season and then came into spring training and, you know, uh, 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 thank, uh, thanks to play just I think you know 13 innings or something like that and just absolutely dominate in double a and then uh six or seven games now maybe in uh in triple a and I've had a uh, couple good outings and a couple you know learning lessons is what I'll is what I'll call those but uh had another rough outing today a couple walks uh we ended up losing the series because of it but you know it is what it is but we got a hun another 100 games left so a lot, of, a lot of baseball left, so, you know, I'm not going to get down. Now we just got to hit the grind mode and just start grinding out some good outings and start bringing some of these ERA numbers and stuff down. Yeah. <clears throat> yes, sir. And I know the, the Iowa Cubs are, like, the best team in the division right now or the conference. Uh, those are at the standing. So, yeah, no, uh, no easy task there. But if you want to bring us back, I know your last year, 2022 in Schaumburg, you had uh, ERA whip – pretty much any numbers were kind of career numbers. You had a career year there. And then if you want to tell us what it was like after that season and leading up to uh, October when you ended up getting signed to a minor league deal with the Brewers, kind of just what was going on throughout that process. Yeah, so uh, 2022, it was a really, really good year, like you had mentioned. The stats just, you know, was really, really great. Uh, biggest thing that kind of helped me was an increase in velo. Uh I kind of found some checkpoints that I needed to feel in my mechanics and I was able to start replicating those. And then, you know, the velo was just kind of coming with it. So uh, I definitely think the increase in velo helped. Uh, besides that, uh, I, I really had a big focus in 2022 and I need to get back to it is like no walks, like uh, make teams hit, hit me three times in an inning to score. So, uh, you know, I, I don't think about home runs at all as a pitcher. Uh, that's not in my mindset because if you think about it, it'll come. So my idea is to make guys hit three singles in an inning to score off me. And if you do that, I'll tip my cap and, you know, I'll, I'll take those chances every day. But like uh, I try to explain it to the kids that I train. It's, you know, as a pitcher, we always have the, we always have the percentage numbers on our side. All we have to do is throw strikes. We throw strikes and we get ahead to, if we beat the hitter to two strikes before he gets to two balls. The odds are always in our favor and I'll play those number games every, every day, you know? So, uh, and that's kind of been the struggle right now this season. I don't want to get too far ahead, but uh, right now in triple, I just walking too many guys and not getting to two strikes before they get to two balls. But uh, yeah, 2022 was great. I was expecting to be like eighth inning guy and close some games if our closer wasn't ready, but uh, you know, unfortunately our closer kind of started off the year struggling and then, uh, you know, I had a meeting with Jamie Bennett, the manager at Schaumburg, and he was just like, Hey, you're our guy now. You're the closer. So, uh, it was kind of nice because I could get into like a rhythm and I had, you know, the routine was really easy. And then, you know, the guys in front of me were pitching great too. So, uh, just getting into that routine and then knowing I only have to go one inning or if I come in in the eighth, it's like, Hey, you got to go eight, eight, nine. But, uh, it was really good. Uh, we had a really good year, made it back to the championship and then, you know, I got walked off twice in back-to-back -back days, but, you know, it was it was really cool. It was a really good year, and uh, very, very grateful that that year happened. So then when you went after that season, did you – were you hearing anything from some teams uh, throughout the season in Schaumburg, or did it really contact or anything started to come up during the off season for that, or when did you start getting in contact with some – Teams are here. Uh, mid year, I started getting notice from some major league teams. Uh, the Yankees and the Angels were the top two uh, off the off the get, um, and then they kind of kept eyes on me. They had a lot of scouts at games. Uh, you know, I, there was a series in Gateway where I came in into a, like a losing game situation. We were down like five runs or something, and, and they're like Thompson, get hot. So I kind of knew there was a scout there that wanted to see me because you know there's no other reason a closer comes out of that game, and I had just thrown maybe a day or two before that. So, uh, so I know there were scouts there. Uh, they were, you know, looking at me pretty hard. And then I had a, a decent outing in the all-star game. 
and I know there was more scouts there. Uh, as the year went on, I, th I think a couple more teams jumped on board. And then uh, right at the end of the off season, I actually was thinking that I was going to sign with the Kansas city Royals after talking to some of their scouts. Um, I was talking to them. I talked to them on a Monday and they said, we'll get you a contract sent over by the end of the week. And Thursday came around and I got a call from Jamie Bennett and he said, Hey, you just got signed by the Milwaukee Brewers. And I was just like, wow. Okay. So I didn't know how exactly that works. So I got in con. Well, they called uh, Brian Gale, the scout for the Milwaukee Brewers contacted me. And uh, he was like, Hey, we'd like to give you a contract and, you know, I'd love to bring you on. And I, I asked him, I said, Hey, the Kansas city was supposed to send me something. Like, I don't know how this works. Uh, you know, it's the first time doing this. So he said, you have the option, but it's, you know, we're ready, you know? So I went to, with Milwaukee having Ryan Middendorf was already in the organization and, you know, mm -hmm. Jake Cousins. I've seen how those guys have went up the system and how well the Brewers, you know, treat those indie ball guys. So I just felt like that was a better spot and Kansas city wanted me to shave my beard. And, you know, I, I wasn't, I wasn't quite ready for that. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey. Do you have any, when you signed the contract, um, do you have any um, cool story? Did they kind of just like fax it over to you or what, what was that? What was that like when you, yeah uh, well it wasn't fully official until okay. after they flew me out um because you got to pass physicals and all that before they truly sure. signed okay uh, i flew out for two days the first night i got there i uh what did i have to do had to, the first night i took five mris so they did uh five you know i don't know if you ever had an mri or not but oh, yeah all kinds of different funky ways laying in the machine. Like, you know, we're doing one where we're here. We're doing one where we're laying in there like this, you know, we're doing the right arm so they can get comparative of what the arms are looking like. Uh, so it did five, five, had five MRIs the first night and then a really big physical, you know, EKGs and heart studies and all kinds of stuff, blood work. So I had to do the blood work before I left. So all of that came back clear and then like two days later, two, three days later, they sent it electronically and I, you know, I e-signed it and then mm -hmm. sent it back. And once they okayed it, that's when I kind of made it official. Okay. Awesome. And then uh, walk me through oh, yeah. your spring training and kind of how that process was going down there. First time um, being with, you know, like a major league ball club and in that atmosphere and just how it was. Yeah, that was uh, very eye opening. So it it was very in a good way, you know yeah. what I mean. So uh, they asked me to come to early camp so I could throw a couple bullpens beforehand. Um, so I go to early camp. I think I got there like February thirteenth or something, twelfth or something maybe. I think I left my house the tenth or something. Uh, I go out there early. Uh, you know, I start throwing some bullpens. You know, start meeting the pitching instructor or coaches and, and then coordinators and you know start trying to put uh pretty much names the faces and all that stuff from people I've been in contact with in the off season. Uh bullpen started going really well. Uh they I got to do like one or two live at bats. And then they had saw something with my breaking ball. So I was throwing like a, a it's like a slurve. And that's what I called it coming up too. It was they really liked the fastball, but they wanted more they wanted a breaking pitch that didn't have as much depth this way. Okay. So my slurve was kind of from here to here sure. and they wanted to get the lefties that was more side to side more sweeperish stay on playing better look like that fastball then it just kind of veers off and then let this oh, the differential mess with the hitter so much rather than the sure. dip and dive uh so we developed so we took two weeks off to do some uh pitch training trying to figure out grips and stuff to make all that work and then we ended up running into I found a sweeper grip, a two seam, the same one that Otani uses for his sweeper. Uh, I use that for my sweeping slider. And then we actually found a cutter grip too, but I'm not throwing that right now because we just wanted to get a better grasp on my slider curveball. I still have my curveball, but uh, so we go slider curveball, fastball, and then we bang the change up just because, you know, they, they have all the metrics and numbers and stuff and they're like, you know, your slider and your curveball grayed out at like 65. So, and your changeup's like 35. They're like, if you just want to get depth with some, if you want a full guy with lower speed and depth, just use your curveball. And I was like, okay, I'm fair with that. 
and they're like, uh, you know, then use your fastball up in the zone. It's going to play the best. So uh, in double A, that's exactly what, what I went to. We we bang the cutter. We bang the change up. We said, here's fastball slider curve. Uh, go at them. But, uh, you know, we did all that in spring training. I came back, had a couple outings. Uh, again, in the minor league games, maybe two or three outings in the minor league games, throwing an inning or two, did pretty well. And then the very last day of spring training for the big league squad, I got in for an inning. I think it was an inning. Uh, I got in for an inning on the, on the big league team, gave up a run on a sack fly, but you know, it was, it was pretty cool to, you know, just the experience be like, Mm -hmm. okay, I'm playing with the big guys now. You know, I've earned this. This is what it's all about. You know, showed I could hold my own and, you know, ended up striking out the one lefty that I faced. So with this new sweeper grip, so Overall, it was a good good experience spring training wise. Yeah. And then, um, what do you think if when you look back on, um, because I'm sure there were times, um, earlier on in your career in the seven ball, uh, seven year indie ball journey, where, um, whether you liked it or not, I'm sure there were times when you know you were getting down on yourself and probably doubting yourself in your career, and just, um, when you look back on that now, how is it like? How do you reflect on that, and just how do you, you know, find it in you to keep going and just keep persevering. Yeah. So like when I, when I, uh, so I, I, I unenrolled is what I call it. I pretty much dropped out of college when I got an offer to play in the Pecos league. So when I went unsigned, I was like, shit, I do not want to be getting a big boy job yet. This is mm-hmm. not what I want. So, uh, not knowing what the Pecos is, I jumped into that, but you know, um, there's definitely been some times and then Jamie Bennett will attest to this and he'll laugh about it, but I, I'm pretty sure I retired like four times. <laughs> I was with the Bears. He's like, Hey, you playing again next year? And I'm like, yeah, I don't know. I might be done. I'm hanging them up. Or he's like, I'm, I'm going to give you a couple months. We'll, we'll talk it over. I'll call yeah. you and you know, let's see where you're at. And then it was always, you know, Hey, you're playing again. I was like, yeah, I'm playing. Again. So, <laughs> you know, I sacrificed too much and, and that's the grand scheme. Like, Anytime I wanted to quit when I was in indie ball, I had to look back and like zoom out and be like, man, I, I sacrificed this. I, you know, I put so I've sacrificed so much for me just go, you know what? It's not working anymore. I'm done. You know? So, uh, and there was a great meme memes nowadays. They, you know, they can be good and bad, yeah. but it was one, I'm sure people have seen it. It's the guy that's they're digging underneath the ground and they're making a tunnel and there's a big old thing yeah. of diamonds right and the one yeah. guy gets almost there and he drops his head and he turns around and walks away while the other guy is like hungry and he's just like <laughs> working and he knows he's going to get it because he was enthusiastic about getting there. So I, in my head, I was like, I don't want to be that guy at the top that almost made it there. And if he would have just kept going, would have mm-hmm. made it, but just said, you know, no, I'm done. So, uh, but I, I did. Uh, I did tell myself in 22 that that was my last year if I didn't get signed. So good thing I had a big fucking year, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, so, uh, <laughs> yeah, so I, I told myself, I was like, look, I, I can't do it financially. Like, yeah, you do it in general, like family, being away from home, doing it just for anybody. Like, there was just no way I could do it. So uh, luckily I had a big year, and you know, and it paid off. So now, and then now that I'm in this position, it's like, I'm in it for the long haul. You know? Oh yeah, so, that, that clock just reset. Yeah. You got a whole another seven, ten years to go. I don't care how long it takes me to get to the big leagues, whether if, I, if it takes right. me five in the leagues, like I, I don't care. It reset the clock for me. Oh so, yeah, for sure. You know, I'm I'm in it because I'm one call away, and, and that's what you got to you know remind yourself here. It's like you're one call away. Yeah, so, you're away one on you know unfortunate injury or you know just something happens. You know, you never know. Exactly one one call. And call away, and even if you've had shitty outings or your numbers aren't great, like they can still throw you up there and give you a chance and see what you do up there. You know what I yep, mean? Yeah, yeah. So, sometimes just you know, match up wise and metrics. Even if not, yeah, I I completely understand that. Yep. Now, what are your obviously? You said you know you're in it, and the clock reset. You're here till like as long as it takes. What are your um? What's your personal goal and hope for your baseball career looking forward? Like, um. When do you hope, not that, you know, you know exactly when things happen, but when do you hope to maybe get a shot and how long you plan on hoping to play? Yeah, I would love to debut this year at some point. Okay. Uh, we play Washington Nationals in August. 
and I would love to if that if I haven't debuted by then that would be a cool time to debut uh so I could you know all my hometown people could come yeah. and, see it and share that moment with them and all the people that helped me from there uh that would be really cool I would love to play against the Nationals in August uh but in the grand scheme of things I would love to be a reliable piece to the puzzle that helps this team win its first world series. I mean, there would be nothing cooler than that, you know, get, and I, I've thrown in a lot of postseason games and I've mm. lost a couple, I've won a couple and, you know, I I'm very comfortable in the postseason, and that's what I, I live for postseason baseball. It brings the best out of you. So uh, there's nothing more that I would love to be a piece of the puzzle in playoff baseball to help Milwaukee win their first world series. That would be, that would be pretty tight. That's what's on the mind for this year. I want to say thank you to all you Boston Celtics fans for watching.